Reaper video time. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Basically, the first thing you're going to want to do when you open up Reaper is set up your audio stuff. I had the most issues with this and it would close itself whenever I'd open it back up and it was just so problematic. So do this first so we can get it all out of the way. Set your audio system to ASAO. ASM Link Pro is your driver. For these drop down menus here, select one at the very first one and the last one. You can go up to 64, but I just did 30 because you're never really going to use that many more. And do the same for this here. Make sure, you know, these are turned off and you can manually set these. I, I went with this, you know, whatever. After that, go into recording. And if you're going to record in Reaper at all, you have to turn this on or you're going to get some issues when you try to record. You're going to get latency that you don't actually see there. And I'll, I'll show you another way to make that better. Make sure that when you close Reaper preferences, you're not on the device tab because every time you open the preferences, it... It resets your audio and it's infuriating. So we'll keep that there. Uh, ignore this. I have, I'm recording with Ableton right now. But the way I've got this set up is I have my audio tracks here as it would be in Ableton. And I have my four what would be return tracks. These are set to output. So the way I've done this is uh, right here. I just have it set to record input, right, on all these tracks. And on these ones, I've set it to output to stereo. Don't do, late, don't do latency compensated. Over here. I have this set to input still, but the reason it's like that is if we go to my writing options, it's a master send. So the way I've got this going to set up like re or like Ableton is each one of these tracks here goes to a send. And I've done that by clicking the routing button and I've done add new send right here. And I've sent them to these four last tracks that I have here, which are making up the return tracks. I've done that for every single channel here. And these return tracks are set to a hardware output, which is gonna be seven and eight for that one. For Discord, right, I have it set to be link out seven or five and six, and that's just to add new hardware output. That's all I've done for that. Um, this one, for example, right, we've had that, we have that one going to, which says loopback. This one is technically my desktop audio. That's uh, for like a video game, that would be the microphone. These are for microphones, essentially, and these are, you know, speakers inside of uh, SL Link Pro, that's what they would read as. Anyway, moving on. When we add effects to these tracks, which you do that by clicking the FX button right here, and you can just add effects to them and stuff. What I recommend doing is when you've add, added your effects, you go up to options, and where it says chain PDC mode, you turn on ignore plug and delay. If you don't do that, if you have multiple tracks, it doesn't matter which track it is, it'll start to stack latency onto your overall latency, and you're gonna hear it in your head, even though technically that track shouldn't have any latency on it. It doesn't matter, it's gonna do it for each track, for example, with this track here, I have a limiter here, right? This one, I have another limiter and my mic track, I have a limiter. And so those stack latency on top of each other, you know, like 10 milliseconds or so, and it really starts to fuck with your head. So each one of these tracks that you have effects on, you should, you know, open up the effects thing, click options, chain PDC mode, ignore plug and delay. That's pretty important for having zero latency monitoring. Outside of that, I really didn't change much. Um, it's one thing that's important to note is if you want to hear these tracks, the easiest way I found to, to do that is just to arm them for recording, right? Turn them on like that. I'm certain there's another way to do it, but... I took these way up. So yeah, um, there's really not much else that goes into it. If you watch my FL Studio video or my, re my Ableton videos, these are very similar in the way I've set them up. So it's it's pretty universal in that sense. There's really not much else I've done here. Um, the one important thing that's really annoying, that's, which is why I don't like Reaper as opposed to Ableton and stuff, is doing it this way. If I want to set specific volumes for my sends and returns and stuff then i have to open up the writing window and then i can do it with the the slider here the fader that's annoying you know inside of ableton it's as simple as a knob and that's a lot more fun it's a lot easier so that's one thing to keep in mind but other than that i there's really nothing wrong with this 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 works just as good as ableton and any other daw which speaking of which if you have another daw you want me to do and figure out how to do this with to give you the most efficient live routing then comment it and I'll do a video on it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you join my Discord for one-on-one -on -one help if you're in need. Thank you.